Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome back to our Revelation Reflections. Today, we are going to be in Chapter 2, reading verses 12 through 17. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Pergamum. This is the message from the one with the sharp, two-edged sword. I know that you live in the city where Satan has his throne, yet you have remained loyal to me. You refused to deny me, even when Antipas, my faithful witness, was martyred among you there in Satan's city. But I have a few complaints against you. You tolerate some among you whose teaching is like that of Balaam, who showed Balak how to trip up the people of Israel. He taught them to sin by eating food offered to idols and by committing sexual sin. In a similar way, you have some Nicolaitans among you who follow the same teaching. Repent of your sin, or I will come to you suddenly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will give some of the manna that has been hidden away in heaven. And I will give to each one a white stone. And on the stone will be engraved a new name that no one understands except the one who receives it. And here ends our reading for today. Now, when I reflected on this passage, I had titled it, Stand Strong for God. We're starting to see a pattern in Jesus's messages to the churches. Today, we learn what he wants to tell the church in Pergamum. He comes to them as a sharp, two-edged sword. You may make may recall a similar reference to the word of God in Hebrews 4.12 and Ephesians 6.17. The word is Jesus as John opens his gospel. Jesus is truth. Therefore, the word is truth. We'll see a focus on standing strong on the word of God in today's message. Jesus commends these people for standing strong despite the evil surrounding them, tempting them. That can be hard. We can probably identify with what it feels like to see messages in the world that are contrary to our Christian values and beliefs. We see how what we hold dear can be trampled on and made ugly by people's own misunderstanding. It can be difficult to stand strong for God in the face of hostility or fear. Usually, we encounter the fear of not being accepted. Do we ever avoid tough conversations so that we can be politically correct? We can do better at standing strong and being true to our convictions. That's called integrity. We may not win any popularity contest, but quite frankly, if eternity depends on it, it's not a bad price to pay. I'd much rather be known as a woman of integrity who lives out her faith rather than one who secretly has a relationship with Jesus. There's no aligning our authentic selves we see and or try to please the world and not God. Jesus was equally frustrated by how the people of the church in Pergamum were tolerant of sinfulness around them. It was as if they were okay with looking the other way. It's not okay. We can't just look the other way and pretend sin Inequality, deception, persecution, etc., is not happening. Just as bad as it is to be in denial and think that so long as we do, though, don't do those things, it's okay, that's not good. Jesus said, Repent of your sin, or I will come to you suddenly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. 
The truth of scripture is at our disposal to read, to consume, to digest, and to live by. We can stand strong for God when we stand on his word. I'm not exactly clear on the ending here and what these white rocks are all about. What do you think? The color white would suggest purity. The fact that it's secret is kind of cool. We belong to God and he knows our name. Maybe it's like our forgiven name instead of the given name chosen by our parents. Our forgiven name is chosen and given by God to set us apart as his, as his own, when we stand strong. So where are you feeling weak? Are you being tolerant of the things that God hates? Take some time today to wrestle with these questions and be clear on where you stand. For now, let's pray and make this the prayer of your heart. Lord, it can be hard to go against the flow. Help me to see how I can make a difference so that others have the courage to stand strong beside me. Thank you for your message to the church in Pergamum. It helps me understand how you want me to act and respond to the world around me. There's so much oppression and hate. Lord, help me bring love and reflect you in all I say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I hope that you found some words of hope in today's reading. The book of Revelation is revealing Jesus and what he wants for our lives and who he is, who he stands for, all of the things. It's a beautiful time, a beautiful time to reflect on that. So until next time, be safe, be well, and be blessed.